Fuck yeah. We were determined that Grinder Man was an ongoing idea. As soon as we finished Grinder Man 1, we wanted to do a, a, a Grinder Man 2. <laughs> Sex, death. I couldn't write a real serious song about being funny first, I don't think. I feel I'm talking about a lot of the time about serious things and often dark things. And uh, the humour kind of keeps the whole thing afloat. The process for Grinder Man to go in and actually record something is that we go in with nothing. We don't have any ideas, we haven't really talked about it, or at least me and Warren might have talked about stuff, but by the time we get in there, any ideas that we have to push the music in any particular direction seem to evaporate once we actually start playing. And we just play music, and the whole thing is a long jam. By day five we are delirious, we're creating music that we, we, we should never have gone near in the first place, 15 minute flute solos, all sorts of kind of stuff. Then we, then we kind of go back and we listen to this music and uh, with the, the four of us together and we pinpoint bits of music within this great kind of sea of bullshit, basically, that's, that's good or promising. Collate this stuff and try and make songs out of some of these pieces of music. The sound comes from playing live. So there was a lot of jamming and kind of freedom within these songs and really wanted to kind of bring that that expansive feeling back into our music <laughs> Nick Lorne produced the album we've uh, wor worked with Nick on the last four albums I think something like that and uh, he's learnt how to work with the with Nick Cave and how to work with the Bad Seeds and how to work with Grinder Man. It's not something that comes naturally to a lot of people and requires a lot of patience, a lot of tolerance, um, an enormous amount of energy, and uh, Nick Nick and talent, some basic talent, and Nick has these things. I mean, the Bad Seeds basically, I sit on my own and write a bunch of songs, largely. I mean, some of them are, are written with the band, but most, mostly I sit and write some songs and some lyrics and bring them into the studio and the Bad Seeds work out ways to make my kind of meagre offerings into something that's substantial and um, epic and brilliant. And we're, we're, I think we're much more involved in, in the different parts, you know, as a, as a kind of collaboration. She is the Allah, I don't care about Buddha, she is the Buddha. Woo! It's important to understand where your strengths are, but it's equally as important to know, know when to pull back if there's someone else around who can do the job better or who understands that particular thing better. This morning and I thought, what am I doing? first song on the album is called Mickey Mouse and the Goodbye Man. Oh. To me, lyrically as well as musically, sets the tone for the record. I mean, it, it, it's a kind of hard rock song and I think it, it, it opens the door and allows people in. There's something about it. It's, it has an immediate kind of charm to it. I see him pounding And he sucked her and he sucked her and he sucked her dry And lyrically it sets up a kind of scenario um, that's, that seems to seep into the other songs and, and is part of a kind of ongoing narrative that runs through the record We do is being done by a woman called Elinka Hofner, who sent me an animated video that she'd done for a Bad Seed song called Moonland. And I called her up and asked her if she'd be 
interested in doing another one for a grinder man. So. <laughs> What happened really was that she sent a storyboard of what she wanted to do around this particular song. She wanted to, to provide the kind of visual story that went behind these strange and abstracted lyrics that you, you will hear in this particular song. And the storyboard itself, just the singular drawings, was so impressive that uh, I asked her if she would actually do the artwork for uh, the whole record for the booklet inside which has uh, many of her drawings, her wonderful drawings um, illustrated with some of themselves and that's it's really magical, extraordinary stuff. We've got one for Heathen Child, which is uh, directed by the brilliant John Hellcoat, who I've worked with for many years on various things, um, but he's the director of the proposition and of the recent masterpiece, The Road. And he is... Uh, <laughs> sorry. He is behind the camera as we speak. So. It's heavy, it's dark, it's the first single psychosexual manifestations of a girl who's trembling on the uh, precipice of adulthood. cover of the Grinding Man record was done by Polly Borland, who I've worked with for years and years now, and she did um, an extraordinary photograph of a wolf. The wolf came from, I think, John Hillcoat is behind that camera now, being in LA, and this is either right or wrong, John, and seeing uh, one night on the street, on these suburban streets, a wild coyote coyote that was starved and uh, kind of ranging around the streets. I kind of thought, well, that's, that's a really nice image, but let's do that with a, a wolf. Entering a 70s Grecian style bathroom. The wolf was a, is, a, is a symbol that runs through a lot of the different songs. <laughs> Playing music that we we really enjoy playing. There's a wonderful sort of self-indulgence I think about Grinder Man that we're really enjoying. Um, we're we're doing stuff to please ourselves on some level, um, and and you know so there's a real joy in the music because we're playing stuff that we we love. Mm -hmm. 